Everybody, it's Tyler here at Kettering One, checking in with 27 Team Rush Hall of Fame team and a phenomenal performance here so far as we're filming this at Kettering One. This robot is absolutely gorgeous. There's so much we're going to be diving into just from the chassis all the way up, talking about some really cool code that they're doing with this well too. But you just got to look at some of these awesome mechanical features they have. Efficient score. I absolutely love this robot. Let's dive more into it coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Lauren, let's start off from the uh, ground up on this robot here. Uh, you guys are using uh, Krakens on it, so I'd love to hear more about what you're doing for your drivetrain, your chassis, and uh, some cool things with your bumpers too I'd love to hear about. Yeah, of course. We are using SDS MK4Is again this year for our swerve modules. We're using the new Kraken motors for our drive motors and Falcon V3s for our steering motors. And we're using L3, the L3 gear ratio this year. We've used L2 in the past and it's been working out great. And uh, Krakens wise, how have you been uh, satisfied with the Kraken motors so far? We really love them. We had to do some testing early on in the season to see how having two different types of motors on the swerve modules would work, but we found out that it works great and we, we really like it. We were talking earlier, uh, you said you're doing something a little bit different with your bumpers. Talk to me more about that. Yeah, we made rounded bumpers this year. We've never done it before and we really, really love how they came out. We had to figure out the best way to make the fabric to put over the bumpers. We only have one seam this year, which is great because we had some more rips in our bumpers previous that we didn't love. Well, it's been working out well so far, right? No rips or major tears so far, so I'm happy to see that as well. Uh, let's pass over to Devin, who's gonna talk about your uh, intake on your robot here. Uh, you, you all got just this beefy wide intake, you know, watching your reveal video. Uh, I love it, I love the overall design that you have, so talk to me more about what's gone into it, how have you uh, uh, planned for like feature hits, and more about like the strategy of doing an over the bumper intake too. Yeah, we decided to do an over the bumper intake this year uh, because we thought it would give us a little more reach compared to a lot of the teams that are doing under the bumper. And it seems to have worked out pretty well for us so far. Uh, for durability wise, we kind of knew that we wanted this to be a very durable part of our robot because of it being the main thing that you know comes out of the robot. So there's a lot of half-inch polycarb and very, very beefy things on it. We're using a lot of thrust washers this year, as well as a crash bar for any of those side impacts. Uh, for the main intake, there's three rollers. They're covered in a grip tape, and the, the bottom two are spinning opposite directions, and this one at the top redirects them into the indexer. And our indexer has a bunch of rollers on it, eight, and there's three sensors total. The one at the front is for driver feedback, and then the two in the indexer are for uh, the note and where it sits in the robot. Can we see a note come in the uh, robot and take a look at what that intake looks like? So really smooth process uh, that you have for there. It looks really good on that. I, I got to ask you, you mentioned half-inch polycar. That's been a long time since I've seen a team do that. Is that just to, to give that uh, durability on the intake? And it, does it have any flex to it too? There's not a whole lot of flex. I mean, one thing that we said while we were designing is loose is fast. So it's got a lot of uh, rigid, rigidity to it, but it's still, it's got a little bit of flop, which has helped with some of those impacts as well. That half-inch polycarb has been very nice because it hasn't cracked or anything. It's been very, very durable. And looking back at your decision to do over the bumper versus like an under the bumper, are you uh, happy with it so far? Absolutely. I think it was a great decision for us. And just having that little bit of edge in the in autos where our intake is in front of our robot as opposed to having our robot to have to run over the note. Julia, let's talk about the launcher in this uh, and following that note journey uh, all the way through. Uh, you got some really cool stuff. 
going out with this launcher. I uh, really got to hear about these uh, big brass flywheels that you have as well too, so talk to me more about it. Yeah, so both sides of our launcher spin at different speeds because we wanted to be able to add spin to our node to help it fly straighter once we launch it. So we added these brass flywheels which are actually a smaller diameter than these wheels here. So they don't contact the note, but they are very heavy because they're made out of brass, so they help the momentum uh, keep going. Looking at your uh, launcher uh, for what you have, uh, what kind of different wheels did you experiment with? Uh, and then in the launcher itself, like uh, just talking about the overall composition of the uh, superstructure of it. The main wheels that we tested when we were prototyping were um, compliant wheels, but we just found that they would get destroyed easily and they would also tear up other the notes. Whereas these RevMax wheels, they are very, very durable, so they don't they don't get ripped up at all and the notes are um, they get torn up a little bit, but it's much better compared to the compliant wheels. And um, so our shooter we have attached it to the robot through pivots, which kind of allows us to change the angles, which is how we can score into the speaker and into the amp. When we are scoring as the amp, we can deploy this bar here, which kind of helps to guide the notes in. And then the wheels just spin a lot slower than when we're scoring into the speaker. Um, and can we see that demonstrated? Let's see a note come in and take a look at that journey. And how has that bar worked out uh, for you so far? You know, as we talked to some teams, there's still teams kind of having trouble scoring in the amp despite having some sort of bar. How has it worked out for a rush so far? We haven't had very many problems with it at all. There was like a little bit of a learning curve when driving with it, but it's, it's held up pretty well. And um, it helps us score into the amp very consistently. Sam, let's talk about some of the code in your robot. You all are using uh, odometry on the field in regards to some uh, shoot on the fly, which I love to hear more about. And it's like uh, anything else that you want to maybe detail off your dashboard or any other feedback uh, that maybe your drive team is getting. Yeah, so one of the greatest things we're taking advantage of this year is using the April tags located around the field to update our odometry or the, our position on the field. We have two limelight cameras. Our limelight three over here is running an April tag pipeline. And this also allows us to automatically aim at and adjust RPMs and angles for the launcher to make shots into the speaker from any distance, as long as you're inside of your own wing. And this actually works by looking at the robot's position, which is updated by the April tags, rather than trying to get direct feedback on how much we need to turn into the tags. So you're constantly getting updates to uh, the recorrect your odometry to get in the right spot. Um, fr from shooting on the fly, are you able to do that at like a full speed or do you have to gear down a little bit? Talk to me more about that. We can shoot on the fly at basically any speed. It, it's been working a little better at our home field than at the event here today, but our drivers are still getting used to it and trying to lock that in. And what kind of feedback uh, do your drivers get uh, from a programming standpoint to help them on the field? So we have a dashboard here. It's written in Vue.js, a web app framework. And this gives not just the drivers important information on the match, such as the limelight cameras, which aren't connected right now, but match time, and as well as the states of a couple of different subsystems in the note journey. It also it contains the Auton selector right here. And not only does it support the drivers, it's also useful for programmers or anyone who wants to look at the robot and see what needs to be fixed. We also have a feature on our launcher to help us trim the angle that it fires into the speaker, which is pretty complex given that we have a linkage to drive our angle. Lauren, let's start to wrap up with this robot, talk about your uh, climb, and uh, I got, do I got to ask you, any future plans for a trap mechanism as well? We do have future plans, but we're trying to push that back until we make sure that everything here we're completely happy with. We set a goal early in the season to be a little more simple this year and that doing the trap would be more of a stretch goal for later. All right, so how about your climber? Let's walk through uh, what you have for that. Our climber is an elevator. It's driven by this chain back here. We have, it's about a 29 to one gear ratio right now. And as you can see, we have two sets of hooks on our climber. 
This is both kind of a fail safe just in case we maybe miss the first hooks going up, but also because the chain is lower in the middle and higher on the side, we're able to grab the lower end if we're trying to line up near the edge of the stage. We can grab the lower edge of the chain with a low hook and the higher side of the chain with a high hook. So it lets us have way more mobility on that chain. We also have little divots in our hooks and that prevents us from sliding on the chain. So doing an ensemble is a lot easier. Yeah, you know, I, I watched your last match. Uh, you had all three robots up in your alliance. Uh, so congratulations on that. Team Rush, good luck here uh, at the Kettering One event. We can't wait to see how you do overall, but a fantastic machine and robot. Thanks a lot for telling us about it. I think teams can learn a lot from it. Thank you. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotics scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu first to learn more and apply.